Welcome back, everyone. So a new study regarding melatonin is drawing some attention, especially for parents. Just last year, U.S. Poison Control Centers received more than 52,000 calls of children being poisoned by the sleep aid. That is six times more than what was reported almost a decade earlier. Most of those poisonings happening or happened accidentally in children five and younger. This year, 500 in calls already to Florida Poison Control were melatonin related. 28 here in Duval County. So jo joining me now is Dr. Chamela Yubani from the Florida Poison Information Center here in Jacksonville. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, you know what's interesting about melatonin? We don't use it in our household, but a lot of people do. Gummies, they taste good. And, you know, the kids actually can easily get their hands on it if it's not safe, stored safely. Mm-hmm. So talk to me about, um, you know, how do you know when it's time to give poison control a call? Is it if they had an extra couple or if they have the bottle? Yeah. So in any exposure, so let's say, for example, I'm taking melatonin and I see that my little two-year-old, I don't have a two-year-old, <laughs> but if my two-year-old got into a, uh, the bottle of melatonin, then at that point I will be calling poison control center because it wasn't intended for them. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not not that age bracket. So if a younger child gets their hands on it, that's an immediate call. Let's just monitor what's happening. Yes. Okay. And so you'll report it to the poison center and then we'll kind of walk you through what type of symptoms you would expect from the melatonin. The thing with poison control is it's great because hands on, you talk with someone mm -hmm. and then they can kind of walk you through. So there's no need to really worry. What does that look like when you call? What are you looking for in your child? So in a child who got exposed to melatonin, um, whether they just went behind mom or the parents back and grabbed a, t a tablet and ingested it, is we're mainly looking for sleepiness. Okay. Those are going to be the main symptoms that we'll see with the melatonin, whether they got into a couple, a handful, and a kid's handful, they can't really get that much as a right. handful, Right, is going to be mainly sleepiness as we'll see. And I think that's hard to say because melatonin is supposed to keep you, put you to sleep. Right, right. So are you monitoring the child then for the next day or how long do, are you advised to keep an eye on them? So it really depends on how much they ingested. And most of the time when we get calls from the poison center, we're unsure how much they got. So the main thing is just going to be watching for um, excessive sleepiness. If you notice your child is falling asleep, that is okay mm -hmm. because that's what melatonin intends. That's right. the effects of the melatonin. So we'll just monitor them for the next couple of hours and then they'll wake back up. You know, we think as parents that our kids, oh, we put on a top shelf, they're not going to get to it. I've seen mm. my son when he was little climb up on the counter and get his hands <laughs> on things he shouldn't. Right. So you really have to think about that. What advice do you give parents when they're storing products that are natural and generally mm. are safe unless you consume too much? So the advice we give is to keep stuff locked mm. because especially those gummies, because they're attractive to kids. They're like candy. And sometimes kids can get into the melatonin because they're, they think it's candy. Um, also, other gummy preparations are like THC or Delta-8 gummies. Mm. And the main thing is no matter what you have in the household, make sure you keep them locked up and keep it up, up up mm -hmm. and away. <laughs> right, okay. So not just up a little bit, up, no. up and away. Yeah. Have you all seen increases in similar products? Yes. So melatonin, um, THC gummies, um, Delta-8 gummies, like all these gummy preparations, right. those are what we're seeing a spike and in, increase in calls, especially in the children. Yeah. Would you advise even, you know, for parents maybe not to use these types of products? I know my dentist hates the gummies. <laughs> <laughs> so I would only advise using it under the uh, purview or a prescription under the doctor's right. purview. And then as well as, um, as long as you're taking it as prescribed and the doctor knows that you're taking it and your doctor's okay with you taking it, then just take it as prescribed. I know, you know, when I used to work with poison control, a real high percentage of the calls typically it's not really a problem. You never have to take the kids to the hospital, but it's so mm. good to have the number to call, right? Just right. to rule anything out. Mm -hmm. How do you know a percentage, how often kids do have to go to the hospital for this? Most, most of the time, all calls can be monitored at home. Right. Most calls, I wouldn't say all, most calls can be monitored at home. Okay. Um, at least the years that I've been working in the poison control center uh, with a melatonin exposure, I have yet to send a kid in from a melatonin okay, exposure. Well, that's good to know, but mm -hmm. definitely the number's there for you. It's free, 1-800-222-1222. So very easy to remember. Give them a call. They're there for you mm -hmm. just to make you feel better about what happened. But in the meantime, up, 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 and away. Keep away. those gummies away from your kids. Thank you for that's coming right. in. No problem.